fouls for UB. Bernard Wheeler, Eric Klaus, and Nathan Johnson each have two. For Niagara, Chris Watson has two. And Calvin Murphy Jr. with two. On the baseline, Kevin Jobody will be called for a blocking foul there. It looked like Kevin was moving his feet as Young Grove, and that was a dangerous play. If Young would have picked up his fourth right there. Well, you can't play tentative, and Rashawn Young has got, just got to try to play his game. Niagara's played a lot of zone in this ball game, and UB has not been able to beat them from the outside. Traveling call again. How many times have we seen somebody inside that's at, least UB a, at least the fourth traveling call in the UB Bulls tonight. That one was on Robert Harris. Jeremiah Johnson has it stolen from him by Wheeler. Johnson was looking up court. Wheeler misses, rebounds, misses again. Jeremiah Johnson did a great job. He didn't give up on defense. Went up, got the rebound, and Wheeler came over the back. Not only didn't they score, they got a foul. Unbelievable. Great break for the Purple Eagles, but that was brought on by Jeremiah Johnson's hard work. That's three fouls on Bernard Wheeler. Who reaches four. around and commits four. Now that's a dumb foul. You just pick up your third, and you don't want to go and try to strip the ball. That's just undisciplined play on Bernard Wheeler's part. That's he's a gonna, sophomore, it's not like... <laughs> no, he's, play, he's played a lot. Now that's going to force Mike Martino to go to the point for UB, and that takes him away from scoring opportunities. Matt Clemens into the ball game in the substitution. Nobody in the high post, throws it away. Kevin, Kevin's the tallest guy in the court right now. He should be able to see where he's going to pass the ball. He just turned and threw that ball into the stands. Nobody, another one who struggled in the first half. I couldn't get him involved offensively. Just three points. Had two field goal attempts. Watson didn't even try a shot in the first half. Uh, tough, tough call. Going against O'Connor will be a second. That was a tough call. Uh, Jeff was trying to move, but uh, it looked like uh, Clements moved into him. Niagara again in zone. Young tries to penetrate against it. No, he got caught off his feet there, and Jobody picked up another foul. Well, Young was ready to turn that one over, but the foul call against Jobody. Bailed him out. Jobody picked up two fouls here in the first two minutes of the second half. Nobody scored to this point in the half. Still 27-20. Long rebound, knocked to O'Connor. Niagara's had no semblance of a running game tonight. Now Watson with his first field goal attempt. Basket and a foul. He's too good a player to keep off the, the scoreboard. He'll, he'll get his. He's just an excellent player. They've done a great job of double down on him, but if they can get him free, you know he's going to get to the basket. Trademark Watson going along the baseline. He's, that's, his, that's his patented move right there, to go to the baseline. He goes so hard. He's really developed into a fairly decent foul shooter after the terrible time he has as, as a uh, freshman and sophomore. Well, Niagara matches its biggest lead of the game. It's back up to 10. Young forced the shot and got it to fall over Jobody. And that was a prayer. Yeah, it was. But he, Rashad Young's a strong young man, and he just takes that ball in there, and but luckily that time he got it to go. Leonard Tanga Shaka commits his first foul, getting tied up with Jobody. 14 fouls already against UB. Niagara has three. We played two and a half minutes in the second half. Now this is the game of fouls. You know, UB had 50 free throws in its last game against Oregon State. <laughs> Not like this is unusual for them. No, they, they force things because they go inside so much. They, they like to drive into the lane and then kick the ball out. So they force you to, uh, to follow. Speaking of kicks, that resets the shot clock. Jermaine Johnson got a step on his man and got two. Jeremiah Johnson made a very nice play, scooped that ball up left hand and put it in. Young, nice look that time and a beautiful pass to Robert Harris. 
Looked like he was going up, but dished off. O'Connor. Old ball. Tango Shaka had it knocked away by Watson, but it was recovered by Martino. UB, four on three. Martino, offensive foul. Take away that bucket. Completely out of control. Mike Martino was completely out of control on that. He had a four on three, and he just decided to take it to the basket. And uh, Jeff O'Connor made a nice play, stood his ground, and got the charge. Now they're just making sure at the scores table they got the uh, correct number. They're begging for a play there. They didn't want Martino to pick up a foul. Well, they would have gave that to Wheeler, which they were saying one day. He'd have been out of the game. <laughs> He's on the bench. How did he pick that up? <laughs> Fall out of the game on the bench. How's that? Nice pass from O'Connor to Watson. They're getting Chris Watson involved. Now they're starting to get a little motion to their offense. Good work by O'Connor. Jeremiah Johnson diving to the floor. Martino recovers for UB. Young on the penetration. Basket. And a foul. We got one guy looking for a travel. They're going to count the bucket, and he's going to go to the line. Sean Young is pumped up. Who are they going to call that one on? Chris Watson? That would be three on Chris if they gave it to him. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, that was a tough play. It really did look like he walked, but they didn't call it. Thirty-four twenty-seven Niagara. Sixteen twelve to play. Johnson into Watson. Watson goes baseline. Reverse layup. Won't go. Rebounded by UP. Johnson outlets. Now Young commits the offensive foul as O'Connor got position. That'll be four on Rashawn Young. They picked up a technical foul too. Uh, they go by. Coach Cohane picked up a technical foul. Not a very good move at this point in the ball game. Now the momentum shifts back to Niagara. Niagara had a technical foul on its bench in the first half. That'll turn around the fair play, so. That's the seventh team foul already on UB. Well, Rashawn Young was just out of control in that play. He was pu so pumped up uh, on the play earlier, the three-point play that there he tried to look. make something happen. That was a great look at it. It was, definitely was a charge. So he just ripped his coat off and threw it into the bench, got a charge out of the Niagara fans. And we're also cheering because Jeremiah Johnson's putting points at the board from the free throw line. One out of two. 35-27 Niagara, 15-59 to go in the half. Niagara will have the ball after this timeout. We'll take a break, be back with more Purple Eagles basketball in just a moment. Give them something they'll really use. Pagers from Page Time are reliable, inexpensive, and a gift they'll use over and over again. Call now to order a brand new Motorola Renegade Pager for only $29.95. Local paging is less than $9 a month. Call Page Time today at 1 800 870 2220. Happy holidays from Page Time. We're back at the Taps Gallagher Center in uh, Villa. I guess you said it best in the timeout. It, it's an emotionally charged well, ball game. UB is very, very uh, emotionally charged, and they're you know, yelling and screaming. It's got the fans into it. Now they're yelling and screaming, and you know you get some plays like this. Niagara just cashes in on a technical foul by Coach Tim Cohane, and they get the ball back. They hit a shot here. It's going to be big, big for them. Instead, it's a turnover. A counter pass intercepted by Nathan Johnson. Lemons brings it up the floor. Niagara goes man-to-man -man in this set. 
Tanga Shaka has traveled twice, almost did it a third time. They look inside, batted away Tanga Shaka, tries to go over Jobody, Jobody blocks it and commits the foul. Three fouls in the half on Kevin Jobody. That was a tough one, but I think he did get a piece of, uh, of Tanga Shaka's wrist. That'll get Jermaine Young into the ball game. Jermaine averages 21 minutes a game. Here's another look at it. He goes up. Tanga Shaka goes up. Yeah, Kevin got his arm. UB is still perfect in the free throw line. And they're hanging in the game because of the 35-29. Niagara by six. UB 12 of 12 from the line. Jermaine Young can't stop. Oh, that's oh, goaltending. Can't stop him in there. That's the goaltender. There's no doubt about that one. That thing was on its way down. Well, they say Tanga Shaka will try and block everything. And here's an example. Trying to help but very late. Tanga Shaka, oh man, he walked again. Yeah, that definitely wasn't walking. They didn't call that one. That was an NBA move. Well, looking to get some scoring out of that guy. UB's got to find its offense from somewhere with Young on the bench with four fouls. Well, Martino pick, held in check. They're both, both teams are picking it up a little bit. A lot more movement on offense. 37-31 Niagara. Pulling it back out with 12 on the shot clock. Jeremiah Johnson resets the offense to work against the man-to-man. -man. Gets a screen from Young. Ran a body contact. Loose ball. Jump ball. What do we got? Jump ball. Two seconds on the shot clock. And the ball goes to UB. Now they're a little bit out of control. The Bulls hanging around. Niagara's back into a zone now. Thing that helped him out in the first half. Martino, well off the mark. And a foul underneath. That's gonna go against Nate Bernowski. That'll be his first. Sixth team foul against Niagara. 20-second timeout. We'll stay right here with 14-12 to play. Niagara up six. But both teams are going to be going to the line very often in the remainder of this game and very soon for one and one. Niagara's already at the line for one and one. UB on the next foul will be going to the line. It's not, UB is doing a much better job there. Right. If this game's going to go down to foul shots, UB is going to have the advantage. Niagara cannot let them get close enough where foul shots make a big difference. And right now, that's where it, where it stands. So, you know, they're hanging in there. They're only six down. Six down with the ball. Niagara's five of 11 from the line. UB is 12 out of 12. Give you a little perspective to that. Scott McMillan on the floor with Matt Clemens. Another whistle away from the ball and another one on Bernowski. Frustrated players out on the floor right now, Bill. It's well, they're playing hard, and this game means an awful lot to both teams. The UB that's it's really makes them dominant in Western New York and Niagara. This is what we said in the beginning. This is a revenge game, so there's a lot of frustration. Jackham certainly is is talked this up to his team. Martino hits the front end. It's a very physical game, too, which is added to the uh, frustration level, I think. Well, UB plays that way. That's how they, they play. And, you know, when you play physical with them, you're playing right into their hands. Calvin Murphy into the game for Niagara at the point. Has Jeff O'Connor in the backcourt with him. Bernowski, Young, and Watson up front. That's Watson with the ball right by Tanga Shaka. Shot partially blocked, but Tanga Shaka commits his second foul. 
They can't, nobody on the UB team can stop Chris Watson when he gets the ball in the paint. And the problem in the first half was they were forcing him out of the lane area into the, uh, you know, out of the purple area into the floor area. If he gets the ball into the, into the paint area, he's very, very tough to stop. And so far the second half, he's been able to do that. Got to give Chris Watson a lot of credit. There's a guy who couldn't hit the broad side of a barn from the foul line freshman and sophomore years, and look what he's done now. Now he gets there, and he's, he's a very good foul shooter. And a tough game against Long Island where he lost a little confidence and missed some free throws, brought his average down under 70%, but he was much higher than that going into that game. Armstrong wants the crowd on its feet and cheering. Niagara leads by six, looking for a stop with his own here. 13.40 to play. Open look for Clemens. He makes his first three-pointer of the year after an 0-for-15 start. We can't give people like that open shots. That was a wide-open shot. He split that zone. That's a big momentum shift for the UB Bulls. Niagara has to answer right here. Three-point game. They go to Watson. Watson just has one-on-one, -on -one and he draws a whistle. Nobody, again, nobody on that team can stay with Chris Watson. He's going to get fouled. And once again, he got the ball into the paint area. And once he's in there, nobody on UB has, has the agility to stop him. Alcott commits the foul, and it's his third. Three in a row for Chris Watson. Well, every time UB draws close, somebody from Niagara steps up and hits the basket. So far, it's been Chris Watson here in the second half. UB fans here trying to taunt Chris, but he puts the Niagara's lead up to five. Now you're not going to be able to get to Chris Watson's head. He's a tough competitor. UB trying to post up now with Johnson. Johnson trying to work on Young, trying to power his way. Shot no good. Rejected. Bernacci picks it up for Niagara, gets it in the hands of Murphy. Out of control. Falls down. Completely out of control, Kelvin Murphy. Martino lost. Now we got a three from Clemens. He has two in a row. After going over 15, he drains two and cuts the Niagara lead to two points. 41-39. And the UB fans louder than the Niagara fans here at the Gallagher Center. Well, they got some momentum now. Two big three-pointers in a row. Lots of trying to go one-on-one, -on -one. has to pick up the ball. 12 on the shot clock. You being man-to-man. Nagger's a little out of sync offensively right now. Five, Five. on the shot clock. O'Connor! That'll do it. That's one that'll, that's, a, that's an answer. O'Connor continues to play well against the University of Buffalo. Lemons is feeling it now. Lost the handle, and we got a foul call. Foul's on Watson. That'll be his third. Nate Bernasi motioning to the bench that he needs a break. That'll get Beamer into the ball game, and Jobody will come in for Niagara as well, replacing Watson. Bernasi's done a very good job for Jack tonight. Plays very hard, gets all the loose balls. Playing up to the crowd. He just had a few words for the crowd after he hit that foul shot. First miss by UB from the free throw line. A 15 out of 16. Murphy tried to lead Jobody and they turn it over. It's a good pass by, very good pass by Kelvin Murphy, but uh, maybe a wrong person. Timeout on the floor, 11.38 to play. UB will have it when we come back, down by four.
Well, the Nets haven't been exactly on fire here at the Taft Gallagher Center tonight, but UB has matched in the second half already. It's first half scoring output, doubling that. 20 points here in the first eight and a half minutes. Well, it was just a matter of time until they woke up. They're too good a team not to, not to score some points. 44-40 Niagara, 11.30 to go. Niagara switches back to man-to-man. -to -man. Nobody gets a hand on that pass. Clemens will pick it up in the backcourt and start again. 15 on the shot clock. Martino around the screen. Shot was short. Rebounded by Jermaine Young. Niagara with the big lineup again with Young and Jobody. With Beamer. They go in. Young. Turn around. Won't roll down. Jobody knocks it out of bounds. Well, Jermaine Young had a good look at the basket. The ball just didn't fall in for him. got what it wanted there and got a good shot. Yeah, he did. He got a good shot. The ball just didn't bounce in for him and then uh, Kevin Jobody knocked the ball out of bounds. Ball bounded down the stairs and almost outside. We have to wait for it to come back. Last thing we need is a cold ball. Shooters are cold enough. <laughs> They're picking it up in the second half. Lemons is starting to get a real eye for the basket. Makes a couple threes and then misses two running shots from the field. Ball's on Martino. second and of course that starts the march to the free throw line yeah early in the game 10 48 left and we've got one on one both teams two shots one way 10 team fouls against UB this isn't something you really want to see this early in the game it's nice to get to the foul line but if you're not real proficient foul shooters it can turn the momentum right back to UB Kornowski got all the rest he's going to get. It's time to give Jeff O'Connor one. Armstrong won't want to keep him on the bench too long. He's been the main offensive Well, he's got to give him a little rest because he's going to be needed down the stretch. This game is not going to be a runaway for either team. 45-40 Niagara. 10.45 to play. Again, it's been played at UB's pace. Niagara has not been able to get a transition game going. Look at Clement. <laughs> Forced another shot. He's trying to pick up what UB lacks, which was Sean Young on the bench with four fouls and has been unable to deliver. Wernowski got a step on his man, good help defense. Young pops out from the perimeter and that's a brick. Yeah, that was not a good shot for, a sh for uh, Jermaine Young. It was out of his range and he had to alter a shot because Tiger Shock came out on him. Martino guarded by Bernowski. This Pops the three right in his face. Yeah, and he's talking to Bernowski too. That's one thing about Martino. He likes to talk, and he can back it up. Two-point game, and give a lot of credit to UB. Now away from the ball, we've got a foul. Tanga Shaka picked up his third. Jeremiah Johnson back at Bernaga. Bill, if you're Tim Coyne, you're frustrated, but you're down by two points. Rashawn Young's been on the bench most of the half with four fouls. He hasn't given you much offensively at all. Martino having an average game, and yet you're still in it. That's the scary thing for Jack Armstrong, is they're still in it, and they haven't got off yet. UB hasn't gotten any one of their big scores off, so it's, it's tough. That's why you don't want to really see going to the line as much, because it stops momentum if, when you stop, stop making foul shots. Luckily, Niagara's been able to hit him so far this half. Kevin Jobody had career highs of 18 points and 22 rebounds the first meeting this year, and he's not exactly lighting it up tonight either. 47-44 Niagara. Martino. He's off to McMillan, and Niagara stays man-to-man. -man. Backlash, back and in, turn around over Young, no good. Jobody rebounds, out left to Johnson. UB has three players back. Bernowski's open on the wing, cross court. The Beamer, now Jobody in the high post. Can't get Young inside yet. And now they pull it back out. Ten on the shot clock. 
Johnson, big size mismatch there. Can't get the shot to go. Jobody with a follow, lays it in. Goaltending would have been the call. Alcott touched the ball while it was in the netting, but it's yeah, still Yeah, he tried to knock it out, but Rob Fox was right there to make sure that they counted that two points. And it was a big two points. Every best is big, though, right now for Niagara and UB. Clemens with a double screen, a three-pointer, no good. Young can't save it. UB's ball. Robert Harris back in, and Rashawn Young will come back in for UB. With 8.34 to play and four fouls, Watson will come in. He has three fouls for Niagara, who replaces Jermaine Young. Beamer got a hand on the ball, creates a turnover. Bernowski dives on the floor, knocks it to Beamer. Bernowski's been all over the floor tonight. That was just an excellent defensive play. Bernowski doing the little things tonight after a really subpar performance against Long Island away from the ball. I think they're going to whistle Robert Harris there. Well, Harris just came in the game and he picked up another foul. That's three on him. Jeff O'Connor will come in for Niagara, replacing Bernowski, giving him a break. Watson at the line for two shots. They're all two shots now when Niagara goes to the line. from the line this half, so they've picked it up considerably. 